connection. My topic for today is who stole my Lolo? And let me explain what I'm trying to say. Let's start with the Mishnah. Very interestingly enough, the Mishnah and Sukkah has a chapter called Lulab Hagazul, the stolen Lula. <laughs> and it starts out by saying, Lulab Hagazul Bahayavesh. If a Lulab was stolen or was totally dry, it is invalid to be used on Sukkot. And then it gives a few other um, uh, reasons why it could be invalid, if it's broken, if it's um, uh, etc. If it's not large enough. Mishnah 2, Hadas Agazol, a myrtle branch, a Hadas, which was stolen or dried, invalid to be used. Mishnah 3, Arava, the willow, which was stolen or dried. And again, it gives different things about what would invalidate it. And Mishnah 5, Etrog, Agazol Vayavesh, if it's stolen. Yeah. Okay, so what's going on here? Now, interestingly enough, there is, of course, a discussion in the Talmud because about, for instance, a discussion about Hadassim. Sometimes the sellers, you know, they walk into a field and they start picking up the myrtle branches and they don't pay a lot of attention that maybe somebody owns this field. They think it's maybe just a public, you know, hefker. So there's a discussion like that in the Talmud in chapter three. And it says, you know, actually by the letter of the law, once you ask them if they're theirs, if it's theirs, and they said yes, because the transaction was a transaction from one party to another, you're actually not liable for the fact that they might have made a mistake and stolen either inadvertently or even on purpose. So you're not to be blamed. However, rabbinically, the rabbi said, mitzvah ba ba vecha, that if a person does a mitzvah through a transgression, it's an abomination. Therefore, it shouldn't be done. Okay, those are the halachic discussions. However, the question is, why? Why here? Why is the Talmud talking about stolen lulav, the stolen etrog, the stolen arava, the stolen... How come on, for instance, the Passover, there's no discussion about the stolen matzah? Why, a stolen matzah is okay, and a stolen etrog is not okay? Obviously, stolen matzah would be the same thing. So why is the discussion here on Sukkot about the stolen lulav? Hanukkah, there's no discussion if you stole your Hanukkah. Purim, there's no discussion if you stole a Megillah to read. Rosh Hashanah, there's no discussion about a stolen shofar. <laughs> so what, what, what's going on about the stolen lulav? And I'll tell you what I think. If you looked at my previous talk on the al Khait, I said that in this season, we go from, it's a progression. We go from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, the 10 days of penitence, Aseret Yemei Tshuva, in which we are trying to rectify ourselves. And there's a great emphasis on Ben Adam Lechavero, so the transgressions between man and man, to turn us into and ethically sensitive people, the way the Torah understands ethics between man and man. And, and then once we get through that level, the next level is to take us to what I call the mitzvot ben adam lamakom, the laws between man and God. And the Sukkot holiday is really one of the holidays which is entrenched and multiplied with many, many mitzvot between man and God. We have the four species. Not only do we have the four species, we have to carry them every day and we wave them in a certain way and we go hakafot around the bima. In temple times, there were hakafot by the aravot and the aravot were placed on the altar. And uh, then we have the sukkah, another thing. So we have really an, an interesting amount of if you want to call it ceremonial things, which re represent our relationship between man and God, which have to be explained by themselves, more than just ceremonial. We're taking also the plants, which are indigenous from the land of Israel, as Maimonides says, and requesting rain. But the way we're doing it is, is almost a mystical way 
of a relationship between God and Israel. So since we have a holiday, which is saturated with mitzvot between man and God, it's as if the Mishnah, the rabbis want to remind us, remember, when you are now trying to advance and transcend and enter that area of the mitzvot between man and God, don't remember, don't forget the basics. You can't steal your etro. You can't steal your lulav. In other words, the basics of a human being is the mitzvot between man and man. And if you break that foundation and that first floor, the second floor will never be able to take off. So it's almost like they took the one holiday, which is saturated in, in ceremonial mitzvot between man and God, and made that the paradigm for remember. The mitzvot between man and man have to come first. You cannot be a religious person and argue that I'm praying and I'm keeping all these mitzvot and I am saying to Hillim when you are not an honest, sincere, and ethical person according to the way the Torah dictates, specifically in Leviticus 19 and other places in party. And this is one of the problems today of society. The late Rabbi Moshe Shapira of Ofra used to say that in society, we have a problem of definition, especially society which is influenced by the West. Because the Western idea of religion is all about belief between man and God and not about this worldliness. As if the Torah doesn't say not to steal. The same Torah that says to keep Shabbat, same Torah says that believe in God. The same Torah that talks about the study of Torah and prayer is the same Torah that says not to steal and not to murder and not to kill and not to slander and not to cheat. It's all the same. There were two tablets. The first five commandments are between man and God. The second five between man and man, they are equal in their bearing. But unfortunately, human beings see it differently. If you saw a very religious person walking through the airport and uh, underneath their coat, they had all these like cigarettes that they were smuggling into the country because you're only, I think, allowed like one box or something like that. They had a whole bunch. And let's say they were caught <laughs> as they were walking through the customs and say, wow, those religious people are thieves. But if you saw the same religious person I'm talking from a Jewish point of view, sitting in a restaurant eating pork, you would say, they're not religious. You wouldn't say that's a religious person eating pork. We have, because we have developed this twisted concept that religion is only between man and God. So you can talk about a religious thief. No, if they stole, they're not religious. That is a major corruption of the relationship between man and God, not just between man and man. Vilna Gon says, of course, this is from a Kabbalistic point of view, if somebody steals something, they have to be, res they need to go through Gilgul, which is reincarnation, to come back to the world again, to start all over again, because that's one of the things that there's no way be pardoned for. Without going into the Kabbalistic aspects, the point is though, <clears throat> the ABC of understanding the idea of a religious person from a Jewish point of view is one who's first and foremost saintly on the level of Ben Adam Kabro, the mitzvah between man and man. And of course, the next step is that they're also saintly in their relationship to God, but it's a balance. And that's what I see in this little hint that the Talmud in, in the Mishnah and the Talmud in chapter three in Sukkah start off with Lula Vagazu. Before you get to waving your Lula Venetro, remember there was that basis that we created for Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Now we're taking you forward. Don't forget step one. Now that we're going towards step two. Maybe we have a very Samachta Vechagecha a happy holiday on this day of the sixth day of Cholam, on the sixth day of Sukkot. And I wish everybody, Madim Simcha, Chag Sameach, Shalom Shalom.